yourself across this great world. Right, Ashley? Right, Kimmy. Okay, everyone in the room, I want to hear, if you can hear me, I want to hear you go. Ah, 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 you know ah, what? It sounds like there's 10 people
people. There's actually like 10,000 here, not really. If anyone's in the room, can you hear me go, ah, 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 ah. Yes, that's what I like to hear. At home, I hope you're joining us and giving me your best ah, ah, ah sound. Because you know what that sound is the international sound for? I'm ready to roll first. Oh, your travel back is going to be amazing. It's going to be so exactly much fun. That's exactly what that means. Yes, it's going to be That's so good. Exactly. How good is Ashley? You get a car. You I get a car. I just want to tell you right now, my name is Kimmy, and I am so excited to see you across that camera. And in the room, and I am joined by the one and the only Ashley, and you need to tell everyone your full entire name from beginning to end. Go. Okay. Some people call me Beyonce, but I prefer to be called Ashley. <laughs> Like oh, my full name. Yes. <laughs> Ashley Florence Joseph. Ashley Don't search Florence me. Ashley Florence Joseph. Do not search her. Just, if you do, just search. This is how you spell it. B-E-Y-O-N-C-E. -E. That's me. That's how you find her at Beyonce it's on true. Instagram. Um, I'm so pumped to have you with me today because it's a bit of a last minute thing. Yes. But guess who's ready in and out of season? Ashley. She's ready to roll. Um, Ashley. While people may have seen me, they maybe have probably definitely seen you. Um, I'm one of the trainers here at Hillsong College, and I cannot wait to see every single one of you here. In fact, I genuinely always pray and believe that they're going to be with us here in the room. I'm one of our trainers within our worship stream. Uh, let's see, there are people right now. Ashley, she's a, there's a lot of fans in the wow, place for Ashley. Look at my fans. There's a crowd of people who oh my gosh. security Mom, has now pushed Mom, back I'm on to TV. keep them from signing. Her. She needs to sign autographs after. Just kidding. But Ashley, Tell us a little bit more about ourselves. Are you, are you on staff? Are you a student? What do you do here in the life of Hillsong? I am a student. I'm in what? the pastoral stream. Pastoral. What? Woo -woo. Pastoral stream. Um, uh -huh. and actually, I actually am on staff now, which is actually so funny. What? Um, that actually happened last week, but anyway, that's a long story. I didn't story. know that. Can you tell us what you do? So surprised. Um, I'm working with reception and conference. Okay, so actually, that's exciting. A little bit of a dynamite duo you got yeah. going right now. Okay, I'll, I'll handle that. I'll take that. Oh, wait. Guys, let's look at the chat. See, I say guys, but it's just you and I, Ashley. Let's look at all these people. Hi, Gav. Hi, Simone. Ooh, hey, Hadley. 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 Hi, Hello. Hadley. Hello, Hadley. Jolene. Hi, Jolene. That's my housemate. Hello, Lego Video Bricks. It's so, I've always wanted to meet you, and I'm so thankful you are here today. Hillsong Church. Hey, Hillsong Church. Ah, ah, ah. Hello, Church. Indira. Hello, Justin. Hello. Mitchie. Hi. She's in my court. Shout out to my virtual court. I love you, and I cannot wait to see you today. Um, all right, Ashley, enough about us. Today, what is today? It's very exciting. First all-year chapel back from break. Wow. I'm so excited. As a vocalist, I just popped a vocal cord, and you should yep. never do what I just That's did. That's okay. Healing. But you Amen. know what? It's going to be fine. It is our very first all-year chapel back from break. Yep. That being said, Ashley, as the people light up the chat, I want to know. In the chat and in the room, maybe if you're listening to me and you're like, what is that strange person saying with that microphone? I want to know, what did you do with your break? Even if you slept the entire time, that is a great thing to do to get rest. So Ashley, while everyone's lighting up the chat, Adam, I see you. Hi, you guys. Um, what did you do with your break, Ashley? I worked. What? No way. That's very I good. Love that. Okay, but for real, that is a that is something to be I thankful did something for. Cool though. What else did you do? I cooked. You cooked? Shout out to HelloFresh. I'm not sponsored. Sponsor <laughs> me. Um holla at your girl, member at Beyonce. Um the people want to know, the chat is going wild, Ashley. What did you cook during your break? What did I cook? That's a good question. I don't remember. There was chicken. You know what? And there was beef. And there was rice. That's all that matters. And a lot of vegetables that Say I've never no seen more. before. Chicken, beef, and rice, yeah. and veggies. So I'm basically organic. You're basically, yeah. hello, fresh. You're so good. Okay. So I did fresh. not do a lot of cooking. I was at our staff retreat, which I am so blessed that we got to be a part of. So I'm thankful for that. Mitchie, I see those dolphins to my dolphin core. Hi, Gibby. Um, guys, in the chat, tell me, what did you do with your break? Did you go fishing? Did anyone uh, go to a beach? Actually, we need to be aware, though. Some people that are joining us are actually on lockdown still from COVID. Oh. So I also want you to know we're praying for you because the Lord's on the move. They're probably watching a lot, of, a lot of Netflix. You know what? There's nothing wrong with a bit of Netflix. I'm trying to think of something recently I watched. Probably a lot of children's shows because I have a four, nearly five-year-old and a one-year-old. So we watch a bit of Bluey. Anyone in the house like Bluey? I heard that, yeah. I've I heard never that. Seen it's a very Australian cartoon, <laughs> but it is so much fun. It is amazing. 
Um, today, something that's probably, as much as I love Bluey, Ashley, and no one knows what I'm talking about, we have a phenomenal guest speaker today in Chapel. She's one of my very, very close friends. I love and adore She's this woman. She's my best friend in my head. She's a best friend in your head. You know in what? She head. can be your best friend in your head. And guess what? Her name is Laura Toggs, and yeah, she's right. in the house today. Right now. Let's give it up for Laura Toggs. It's going to be phenomenal. Woo! She is a prophetic woman of God. Doesn't she come? Doesn't fall far from the tree with her mom. She no. is bringing that beauty and that light. It's going to yeah, be I'm beautiful. Excited. Um, something super. It's our volunteer of the day. Everybody, drum roll! Volunteer of the day. I'm beating a drum on my head. Drum roll, please. If you can hear me in the room, give me a drum roll on your your lap. Yeah, I, thank you. I'm yelling as loud as I can. We have our one and only. I need to see this special gift that we are handing this person. Wow. Because wow. this person, I need to take a breath. I'm about to pass out. It is a male. His name starts with J. His surname starts with S. Today, he's getting a very special Snickers in honor of his last name. The one, the only, Jake Schultz is our volunteer of the day, Jake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am not worthy. Now, Jake, we don't have a lot of time, but we have enough time to talk to you. It's true. Jake, what, I'm still about, I need to breathe. One moment, Jake, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? What do you do? Where do you come from? And where do you volunteer? I serve and connect. I lead a connect with Caroline Wolf for songwriting. Where's our songwriting connect? Songwriting, holla uh, at your boy. I'm from Minnesota. You're from Minnesota? Yeah. I did not know that. Uh -huh. Holla at the Minnesotians. I don't know how you say it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it's and awesome. Um, what year are you here at college? I'm a second first. You're a second first. Second first. Any shout outs to the first years wanting to go into second year? Anything you'd like to encourage uh, them with? Just do it. If you're thinking about first year, you know there's going to be a second year coming. So. You know what, Jake? There cannot be a better word spoken today. We want to say thank you for your service. Everyone, please give Jake Schultz thank a you round for your of applause. Service. I'm yeah, sorry yeah, for yelling yeah. at microphone. It happens every time. Guess what, Ashley? We are starting in a very short amount of time. So if you are in the room or if you are across this lens, God's the same there. God's the same here. It's going to be a phenomenal morning in chapel. Let's stir our hearts. Let's get ready. Get your notebook. No box. Get your notebook out. Get your notebooks ready. Get a pen. Get it. Something to type with. Get your phone. Don't Bye, get distracted. Mom, I love you. Tell your mom you love her. Mother's Day is coming up. Chapel is gonna be phenomenal today. We love you. Everyone in the room, can you give a big shout out to everyone online? To yay, all my parents, we yay. love you. We'll see you very soon. Welcome to Chapel. Yeah, yeah. Peace.
sound of the Savior's roar as we walk into the room where people praise.
breath in our lungs. He's given us life. We have love. He's worthy of our adoration, church. Come on. We're going to sing this song and you know it. Let's sing, You Give Life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath. It's your breath in our lungs. So we Amen, amen. What an atmosphere of faith in this room and online. I hope you are sensing the presence of God. What a great sense of faith in this room. Amen. How good is it to be back in chapel? So good. And a big warm welcome to everyone who's joining us online. We are so all in and believing that God is doing something in your life right where you are. In Jesus' name. Just as we're in this atmosphere of faith, you know, for me, college has always been a place where miracles happen. Always. Every single year, every single semester, ever since I came to college back in 2006, God has never, ever failed to do complete miracles and turn situations around. And so right now, we are going to lean in together as a company of believers. And I just want to remind you, According to 2 Corinthians 1.20, every single promise that God has made is yes and amen 
in the name of Jesus. And so right now we're going to pray and we're going to believe for situations to turn around. We've got people here believing for provision of fees for next semester, for future study. We've got people needing to pay rent, people needing healing, guidance and clarity. Uh, We've got someone here believing from uh, freedom from addiction for their father. We're going to believe for that. Amen. Someone here praying for wisdom for church leaders and global nation leaders around the world. I believe we need the wisdom of God in Jesus' name. Uh, Assessments, people believe in God. There are so many needs here, but again, I want to remind us, God is a God of miracles. He is a God who turns situations around. And so why don't we all stretch out our faith and Trent, I'm going to get you to come up here and lead us in prayer. Take these needs in your hand and come on. Every single person in this room online, why don't you stretch out your faith? And come on, Trent, why don't you lead us in prayer, mate, in Jesus' name. Come on. College, would you pray with me? Come on, Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh. You are the provider. God, there is nothing that you cannot do. And so we lift every single prayer request to you, God, both the ones that have been written down and the ones in our hearts, God, for financial provision, for salvation, God. Won't you do it? So Jesus, we lift it to you, God, the the answer, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, God. Would you grant everything so that people would know you and come to love you as Lord and Savior. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You can take them with you, Trent. Off over this way. You are the man. Who loves Trent? Come on. You are a good man, full of faith. Full of faith. Come on. I love chapel. It's so good. Doesn't matter what kind of week you've had. I feel like if you come into this environment, you're going to get encouraged. Someone's going to speak life over to you. Someone's going to speak into your future. You're going to have a great encounter with God. You're going to have fun. You're going to laugh. It's just such a good place to be in Jesus' name. So, hey, a couple of praise reports just before. I reckon we should turn to the person next to us and give them some encouragement as you take your seat. But just before you do, just before you do, I feel like I just lost the room. So, mate, you know what? How about you tell the person next to you what you're grateful for God doing in your life? Let's do that right now. Just take a moment to connect, say hi. Maybe online you can jump in the chats and tell someone what you are grateful for in Jesus' name. So good. We've actually got someone here thanking God for financial provision for degree. That's cool. Someone else thanking God for our for their degree class. I think we should give it up for all of our higher education, our bachelor's and master's staff and students. You guys are amazing. Someone thanking God for new friendships. Someone thanking God that church is back in the room. I think that's pretty... That's something to praise God for. Someone thanking God for a restful college break. So good. Well, I hope you have had a good break. And I also hope that you are expectant and ready for all that God wants to do in the rest of this semester. Now, are you ready to get out of the boat? I don't, I didn't, I don't think I heard you correctly. Are you ready to get out of the boat? All right, all right. So... Right now, I'm, I got the honor and privilege of introducing our speaker today. And so I think we should all be up standing as Roz comes to share. So give it up. Hello, college. <laughs> that is so funny. Hello. How good is it to be back in all year chapel? <laughs> I hope everyone had a good break. Yes. <laughs> I love that. You may be seated. Thank you so much. I just want to thank um, Cam and everyone that's given me this opportunity because I believe that God has a word for all of us in this room. Amen? All right. So did you know, college, that we are called to walk in love with Jesus? Now, not everyone knows this about me, but I'm actually a graphic designer by trade. Yes, shout out to all of my creatives in the room. And so I finished my uh, degree in arts before I moved here two years ago. 
But to be honest, nothing was working for me career-wise. And but God showed me that I that my calling was much more than that. I had to sell my camera gear to pay off my tuition fees. It's it's a real it's a real place. But um, and I was devastated. But in Luke 24, verse 13 and onwards, there are two disciples of Jesus that were also devastated. This was happening three days after Jesus' death. And can you imagine that they were like on their, uh, on their way to Emmaus, they're on their road to Emmaus from Jerusalem. Could it be that the disciples walked out of Jerusalem because they had lost all hope? Maybe that's some of you today in this room. And I want to encourage you because what happened in this passage is that Jesus showed up and he started walking alongside them on the road to Emmaus. But they didn't recognize that it was him at all. And so in this walk, the disciples were telling Jesus that, like, I'd, I'd hope, we put so much hope on him, for him to be the Messiah, for him to save us, but only for him to be taken away from us and to be put to death. I feel like that's many of us in this room where we, we see our dreams shattered in front of us and we have no hope and there's just so much uncertainty for our future. We don't know what's gonna happen next. We don't know what's gonna happen next year or when we fly back home. But I wanna encourage you that in this passage, you know what happens? That Jesus reminded them. He gave the disciples a fresh revelation of who he is through this word. And so college, I wanna encourage you, maybe that's what we need to do today, that we need to get a fresh revelation of who he is. Because these were disciples of Jesus. It's not like they've never met him before. And that's us. We have a relationship with him. But maybe we need to remember who he is. Read the Bible. And lastly, I want, and lastly, I want to say that as the disciples were just in awe of his character, they lost focus in, of their disappointment. And they just desired to spend more time with Jesus. And as Jesus sat down with them, broke bread, that's when they had an encounter with Jesus and they realized it's him. So college, will you walk in love with Jesus today? Thank you. Come on college, one more time. That was absolutely phenomenal. Roz, you have, you've got such a quiet authority to you. You know, I can tell you know who you are in Jesus. And so what a great, encouraging word. One more time. Give it up for Roz. So cool. By the way, did you have a good heart and soul night last night? How good was that? I love heart and soul. It's such a great time for all of us as a college and as a church to hear from our senior leaders and to get around, come together as a, as a leadership team and see where we're going as a church. And what a great night that was last night. I really believe in, obviously, that we're going to see a phenomenal, phenomenal uh, move of God right across our church. And so let's be praying uh, both for that and for our senior pastors. They obviously let us know that they're going to be traveling shortly to America. And so Man, I just love for all of us to keep our senior pastors in prayer. And uh, let's get behind them and believe that as, as together, as we walk forward together, we're going to see God do amazing things as we come into the rest of the year. Amen? Amen. Well, we've come around that time where we get to come around the Word. And it's my honor and privilege to introduce the person speaking today. We actually grew up in youth together. We were in the same year, not at the same high school, but in the same year. And uh, I've had the privilege of Kind of seeing Laura and Pete Togs do life and ministry over many years, and it is an absolute privilege to have Laura coming to bring the word today. So, why don't we welcome Laura Togs as she comes to share the word? Come on. <laughs> wow. Hello, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Oh, I like it. I like it. Oh, it is um, an incredible privilege to be here joining you today. And it's not something that I take uh, lightly or for granted. I feel completely honored to be able to speak into your life. 
And um, my prayer for this morning is that you would feel the immense, overwhelming love of Jesus afresh in your hearts, afresh in your spirits. And even you at home, wherever you're located, where you are, um, if you're feeling a little disconnected or isolated, that the, that the Spirit of the Lord would fill your room and fill your heart and fill your spirit and strengthen your very soul. And so um, when I came in here, I was unexpectedly uh, smacked with the presence of God. Um, smacked. That was strange. I don't know where that came from. Um, but I just felt it. And it's true. When, when Cam was saying that when you come to chapel, um, good things take place. I believe it. And I believe that your spirits are lifted. And that's what I felt when I came in here. As soon as I walked in here, I just felt, oh, my spirit was lifted. And that's the amazing thing about the presence of God. Isn't that true of the presence of God is that it just, it lifts you. It lifts your head. It lifts your spirit. It sets your eyes on the things above, not the things of this world, not the things that are temporal, but the things that are eternal, the things that are heavenly. Jesus Christ, Lord, our Savior, who is good and He does good and He wants good for every single one of us. And so um, you can take your seats. Please be seated. And maybe one of you could stick around. <laughs> that moment where they're like, who's going to do it? Keyboard one, keyboard two, who is it? Keyboardist one. <laughs> oh, email. So I had that classic moment uh, this morning where I threw out everything that I had prepared and had a change of heart, a change of direction. And um, it's always a little bit of a frightening place when you're in that place because you feel like uh, you're on the, a little bit more on the edge, you know, like the kind of like I'm not 100%, but I'm leaning and relying and depending on Jesus and so for me, when I'm in that place, I actually feel a little bit more confident um, because I know that God has to come through and that He will come through. And so I'm excited for this morning. But what I wanted to do um, actually is just share a little bit of my story. I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey in the hopes that it would encourage you. And, um, and I know that many of you are, are young people, maybe in your 20s. 30s, I'm not sure what age you are, um, but um, <laughs> 40s, uh, <laughs> 50s, um, so young, so young, so young, Bernsey, you're so young. Um, um, and so I'm not, um, I'm not pretending to be like this like older lady um, who can speak from like a lifetime of wisdom, um, but I am 34 now. And so, um, and so I do feel like I've lived a little bit of life and I just wanted to share a little bit of what has kept me, kept me here and why I'm standing here on this platform able to speak the Word of the Lord and share from my experience. And so uh, for many of you, um, who perhaps know or perhaps who don't, who don't know, I am a church kid, um, pastor's kid. Um, any church kids grew up in church? Yes. Um, and so I, this church, Hillsong Church, has been my life. It has been my life. It has been my entire life. My mum and dad um, founded the church just a few years before I was born. And so my entire life has been the journey of this church. And I have loved it. I truly have, I have loved it. And I have loved Jesus in the midst of it. Um, but as you would know, as many of you, many of you would have experienced, uh, there comes a point in your life where you realise that perhaps I love Jesus in others. Like for me, I always loved Jesus in my mum. I loved the way that she loved Jesus. I loved the way that she, she loved the Word of God, would open the Word of God and it would come alive in her spirit. It would come alive in her heart. And it would flow from her mouth and it would permeate in her life. And I loved that. I loved Jesus in, in the worshippers of our church. 
I loved that when people like Darlene Check would stand up here and they would call upon the name of Jesus and glorify and magnify the presence of the Lord, I would look at that and I would love it. And I would love the, the enthusiasm that came from people who spoke the Word of God. People who would get up here and they would open the Word of God and they would preach with, with dynamic and with passion and with fire and conviction. And I would, I would lean in and I would love it. And I would love the wisdom and the insight and, and, and the influence of those who surrounded me like youth leaders and kids leaders and people who were in college when I was just a kid who were, who were a little bit ahead, uh, ahead of me, like in terms of age and, and, and in their discipleship journey. And yet they were mentors and they were leaders and they were disciplers and they would disciple me and I loved it. And yet... And yet there's this, these defining moments that we have in our relationship with the Lord. When we come into salvation with Jesus and we're on this discipleship journey, there are these defining moments that count, that matter. And I can think of a handful of moments that truly defined me and set me on course. Um, and when I was uh, probably around 18 or 19 years old, I was driving, driving literally, but, um, but I guess like figuratively, I came to a fork in the road. I was driving, I was, you know, around 18, maybe 19, and I knew in my life I had come to a fork in the road where there were two paths, two roads that I could take. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, one of those roads was walking away from the call of God upon my life. And the other was like, I'm all in. I'm all in for all that God has called me to, for all that the Lord has for me. And I think in that moment, I truly received Jesus into my heart. I think in that moment, I truly was like, Jesus, I've known you, I've known, I've known about you, I've, I've been in this my entire life, but I want you. I want you and I choose you. And I choose you. So I'm driving. It's like a regular Tuesday morning. It's nothing special. I'm just driving and I'm making this choice, this huge choice that seems small, but is so significant because I kind of think about it and I'm like, that choice that day had generational impact. That small little decision that I made that day where I could have gone one way, but I chose to follow the things of Jesus Christ as Lord and my Saviour, didn't just affect me and change the direction of my life, but my children's life. And it's a powerful thing. And what's interesting is that in that moment, I feel like the Holy Spirit called into remembrance um, Psalm 27. Now, what you need to know about me is when I was a little girl, I was deathly afraid. I was a fearful girl. I was shy. I was timid. I could barely speak to my dog. Like, I just was like, he might judge me. I, like, I don't know. Um, <laughs> And so as a little girl, I was very fearful. I was fearful of the dark. I was scared that I would be taken in the middle of the night. I was scared to talk, that I would embarrass myself. I would, was scared to try at school in case I failed. Like I was, I was, I was gripped with fear. And I remember sitting at, on my balcony at home as a young girl and my brother Ben and his friend Tim, Tim Douglas actually, they were sitting on the balcony with me and in their brotherly love. Um, as a little girl, they spoke into my life and they said, why are you scared? Why are you fearful? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm not sure why I am, I am this way. And they said, you need to read Psalm 27. Psalm 27. Do you know Psalm 27? And I was like, I, don't, I actually don't. But I went away as a little girl and I opened my Bible and I read it over and over and over and over and over again. I recited it in my spirit. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? It says things like, when the enemy comes against me, they will stumble and fall. Though war breaks out against me, even then will I be confident. It says things like, one thing I desire of the Lord, this Lord will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire Him in His temple. It even says things like, He will lift your head. He will lift your head so that you can see beyond the horizon. You can see what is coming for you. It says things like, even then I will be confident that the goodness of God will be in the land of the living. And it says things like, and I will wait on the Lord. I will wait on the Lord. I will sing and I will make music to the Lord and I will wait on the Lord. And so as a little girl, as I began to recite this, what I didn't realise, it was becoming principle in my life. I didn't realise it. I was just opening up the Word. I was just reading it for myself. But I didn't realise it was becoming conviction in my soul. And so when I got to that fork in the road where I chose to follow Jesus, Psalm 27 was called into remembrance called into remembrance. And I thought, wow, one thing, one thing do I desire of the Lord and this Lord will I seek that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire Him, to inquire Him in the temple. One thing. One thing, my question this morning is this, do you have a one thing? Do you have a one thing that no matter what comes against you, no matter what your circumstance may be, no matter where where your mind travels, no matter what is going on in your life, you have a one thing that keeps you in line with the things of Christ, that keeps you connected to the vine of Christ. And as I went home that day, I opened up my Bible and I turned to John 15. John 15, I wanna read it to you this morning. This morning, you know it, John 15. Verse one, it says, I am the true vine. Jesus is speaking. I am the true vine and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, He prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I am in you, you will bear much fruit. For apart from me, apart from me, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burnt. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. In some translations it says, then, then you will be my disciples. In some translations, instead of the word remain, it says abide, abide. That word abide means to stay, stay. Or Eugene Peterson puts it as this, make your home in me. If you make your home in me and I make my home in you, you will bear much fruit. For without me, without me, you can do nothing. You can do nothing. And so, so, The story of my life, I don't have 
You know, I don't, I didn't rebel. I don't have a crazy, crazy testimony that I needed to be, to be saved from. The story of my life is this. I'll stay. I'll stay. I'll stay. And I have to tell you, I have to be honest with you, I have had opportunities to leave. I have had opportunities to go. But I know, I know that the Lord spoke to me in the car as an 18 or 19 year old girl saying, stay, stay with me, abide in me, remain in me, make your home with me. The vine has lifeblood. The vine has lifeblood and it keeps you going and it keeps you energised and it keeps your head afloat. It keeps your eyes with the right perspective. That is the vine because the vine is Jesus. It is Jesus. And people can let us down. Church can let us down. College may let us down. Friends may let us down. Our spouse may let us down. People will let us down. People are people. People are human. Humans will let us down. Jesus will never fail us. He will never fail us. He will keep us on course. He will keep us in good stead. He will keep us connected to the heavenly realm. He will keep us in line with His eternal purposes. He will keep us in love with His kingdom, in love with building His church. And so I have made choices. I have made decisions. And I have learned the practiced art of abiding. And that's the title of the next few minutes. The practiced art of of abiding, of staying, of making your home in Jesus, remaining in Him, loving the vine. And so my first point, my first point is this, staying. Things I've learned within the practiced art of abiding. Number one, um, staying, staying is not a liminal space. Is not a liminal space. Now, I learned this concept of liminal space traveling um, because I have the, the honor of um, leading our young and free team for a period of time. We did a lot of travel and we were always on the go. We were always on the move. And at times, I, I know it could kind of look a little bit like fun and glamorous, um, but at times it was, it was awfully unsettling. Um, and a liminal space, ge- geographically speaking, it describes a transitional area through which we pass but don't belong. This may include features such as hotels, rivers, roads, or borders. So a liminal space is an in-between space. It's a space that you are visiting or transitioning through, but it's not where you belong. Now, staying connected to the vine is not momentary. It's not a transitional space. See, if, we, if, I, if I've ever been in an airport, it's only been a maximum three, four, five hours, or if on a really bad day when you get those delays, maybe more. But it's not, a, it's not a perpetual place that I stay in. It's a transitional space. Now, um, psychologically, if you live in a place of, of, of transition, it perpetuates anxiety within you. It makes you feel unsettled. It makes you feel unsettled. And another, another definition of a liminal space is that it's a place of emptiness. It's a place of void. It can also, that's also what it can mean. And so, for example, if you walk into a car park and it's empty, they call that a liminal space. 
And what happens in our minds, in our brains, is that, that we get unsettled because it's not normal. It's, it's out of the ordinary and it loses context because a car park is for cars, like a church is for people, right? And so, and so you kind of like have this like unsettling moment. Now, if we are treating seasons such as Hillsong College as a liminal space, we're in trouble. You're in trouble. What we need to do is stay connected to the vine and ground ourselves. Dig our heels in. I'm grounded. I'm here. I'm making my home here. Might be just for a moment. And yet, like, and yet I'm home here. Practically speaking, that might mean setting up your room properly. <laughs> like you could go to Kmart and buy a little like bedside table for $30, by the way. Sorry, I just saw that the other day. I thought I'd give you girls the insight. They're not bad. They're actually quite nice. <laughs> but this season as well, I wanted to say this. It's not a waiting space. This is not a waiting space. This is not an empty space. Where, where you're empty of purpose and promise and truth. This is not an abandoned space. This is not an abandoned space. This is not a time where we waste away our time waiting for our flight to take us home. This is not a liminal space. And when you are connected to the vine and you choose, I'm going to stay with Jesus, your time is not wasted. Your time is filled with purpose, with promise. Your time is filled with destiny. Your time is filled with the goodness and the grace and the kindness and the everlasting love of Jesus. Your time is filled with the goodness of God. Your time is filled with the awareness of of His presence that goes with you and stays with you. So this is not wasted time. This is not abandonment. This is not emptiness because you have Jesus. And I'm going to stay with Jesus. And you're going to stay with Jesus. The second thing I have learned is this. Staying is wisdom space. Proverbs 4, it says, love wisdom and she will watch over you and keep you. Love wisdom and she will keep you, keep you. And so um, wisdom space, I've got um, here some marks of, marks of maturity and wisdom within the staying space. Is that okay? Little sub points. Number one, stay first of all in purity. Say, first of all, in purity. Wisdom begins by the pursuit of holiness. That's where it starts. First, purity. Wisdom at first is purity. Holiness, the pursuit of holiness. But we would be devoted first and foremost, to Christ and consecrated to Him. Consecrated to Christ. It's a beautiful word, biblical word, consecrated. I love that. Number two, stay peace-loving. Stay peace-loving. Stay away from mean-spirited ambition. Actively pursue getting along with people. Stay peace-loving. It is a mark of maturity. It is a mark of wisdom within the staying connected to the vine. Stay peace-loving. Stay considerate. Stay considerate. Stay gentle. Stay meek. Meek, gentle and meek. It's lovely. It's beautiful. It's Christ-like. Stay submissive to Christ. 
Stay, commit, stay uh, submissive to Christ. Do you submit yourself to Christ? Do you welcome the conviction of the Holy Spirit and submit to Jesus? I was thinking, I was thinking today about um, in Isaiah 9 where, um, where the prophet speaks about Jesus. And he says, He shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. Wonderful Counselor. That is Jesus. That is Jesus. He is our Counselor. It's beautiful. Stay full of mercy. Full of mercy. Overflowing with mercies and blessings. Blessings. Blessing one another. Blessing people. Not cursing people. Blessing people. Beautiful. Stay harvesting spiritual Maturity, good fruit, good fruit. The um, third thing is this, staying is a quiet space. I'm just going to kind of go through this really quickly because I want to get to my last point in the last 3.5 minutes. Um, Staying is a quiet space. Trust, trust is found in the quiet space. And my bravest moments my most courageous of moments have not been the big moments. My most bravest moments have been in quietness and trust, in quietness and surrender, in quietness and worship unto the Lord, in quietness and, oh Lord, help, (laughs) in quietness and strength and strength. Strength can be really quiet. Doesn't make it any less powerful. It is powerful. It is mighty. A quiet strength. And I'm going to go to my last point. Staying. Staying is a fruitful space. A fruitful space. And I just have, I want to leave you uh, with some questions. Staying is a fruitful space. Number one, how is my affection for those I am in community with? How is my affection for those I am in community with? Number two, what level is my exuberance about the season I'm in right now? Number three, do I have a calm, peaceful, and untroubled spirit about me? Number four, have I developed a willingness to stick with things? to stick with it, to stay my course, to persevere. Number five, do I have a deep sense of compassion in my heart? Do I have a conviction of holiness permeating in my life, in things and in people? A basic holiness as it puts it in James 3 in the message. I love it. It says, um, have a conviction that a basic holiness permeates things and people. Number seven, do you find yourselves involved? Do I find myself involved in loyal commitments? Loyal commitments, faithfulness. Number eight, do you trust God's knowledge of you? Do you trust that He sees you, that He knows you? That he cares for you? Do you trust his knowledge of you, of your life, of your heart, of your of everything that's happening? Does he do you trust that? And number nine, are you able to marshal and direct your energies wisely? Because that is the fruit of a life that is stayed with Jesus. There's all sorts of energies. All sorts of energies. I have all sorts of energies. And yet, with the wisdom of Christ as my wonderful counsellor, with His Spirit that leads me and guides me, with His Word that directs me, the energies are directed wisely. Wisely. Why don't you stand to your feet? I'm not sure what happens now because I don't come to chapel. But I'll pray for you and maybe we can worship for a second. Why don't you lift your hands towards heaven? 
We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are kind and that you are good. And that, in that you show us things and you love us and you care for us deeply. And you give us principles and practical things to help us stay with you, with our eyes fixed on you, walking with you, living for you, living in truth. And so Lord Jesus, I just pray for this group of people, for Hillsong College. I just thank you for them. And I pray right now they would be overwhelmed with your love, overwhelmed with your presence, that again, their hearts would be inclined towards you, that their gaze would be set towards you to gaze upon your beauty, Lord God, to love your house, that they would have that one thing, that one thing is like, that's like conviction in their spirits that is so strong. It's so unmoving, so unshaking, Lord God, because they have made a decision to stay with You. Lord Jesus, I thank You, God. Why don't you put your hands down for a moment? Close your eyes, close your eyes. And when I mentioned that moment I had of that one thing, and I felt like God spoke to me and He said, your one thing is to stay. I wonder just for a second if you could just consider what your one thing is. What is your one thing? And then just for the next couple of minutes, why don't you just devote yourself again? Commit it again to the Lord. Surrender it again to the Lord. Submit it again to the Lord. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. With arms high and heart abandoned In all of the one who gave it all So I'll stand my soul to you surrender all I am is yours I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in all of the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul Lord to you surrender Father, we thank You so much for the Word that was spoken today. God, we commit ourselves to stand. We commit ourselves to stay. We commit ourselves to abide in Jesus. Lord, we thank You so much for all that You're doing in and through our lives. And we commit ourselves again to You. In Jesus' Name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Hey, why don't we thank Laura one more time. So profound. Uh, the thing I loved the most was that every word you preach, you live. And we are so grateful for you. We're so grateful for your leadership in our church and over our youth and young adults. And uh, we are absolutely honored. So thank you so much one more time. Come on, why don't we give it up one more time? Well, we might see La on that.
and uh, head out into our lunch. Before you do, don't forget, tomorrow we have Sisterhood and we are in the epicenter tomorrow. So that's going to be amazing. And then Hillsong Man with Brian Campos bringing the word, as I understand. So uh, it's going to be great. Looking forward to that. So have a great lunch. We love you and we'll see you around the hallways. Thanks, everyone. Instagram at the studios underscore HC. We'll see you next time.